Over one million people in the United States are currently living with HIV. And over 40 million people around the world are infected. Last year, over 3 million people died from AIDS. That's like 2747s crashing every day for one year. Or it's like the entire population of Chicago being wiped out in one year. Every year. In this brief film, we'll ask questions like what is it, how do you get it, and how is it treated? I figured the best way to start would be to ask an expert. This is Dr. Seamock. He currently works with AIDS patients, is the founder and director of the Center for Special Immunology, and is a former president of the Physicians Association for AIDS Care. I trained at the University of Miami in the early 80s and actually admitted some of the first patients who had HIV at the time. Now, we didn't know what it was, of course, and at that time it was, it was very scary for us as healthcare professionals. Uh, we actually wore the bubble suits and all that type of thing because we, we just didn't know what we were dealing with. Uh, in 1985 is when the etiologic agent, or the virus, was identified as HIV. The immune system. It protects our body by fighting off infections. Much of this fight is carried out through T-cells, often called CD4 cells. Now we see the immune system with a deadly intruder, a virus. This virus enters and reprograms the CD4 cells until there are so few good cells left that the body cannot fight off infections and cancer. Then the infected cells replicate to repeat the process over and over. This is HIV. Human Immunodeficiency Virus. The key here is the word in the middle, immuno. Human, of course, stands for humans. Immuno refers to a resistance to disease, and deficiency is a lacking or failure. Therefore, it's a human failure to resist disease. HIV. HIV attacks the immune system until it cannot effectively fight illness anymore. At that point, it becomes known as AIDS, or Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. Let's break the words down. Acquired is received or obtained. Immuno means resistance to disease. Deficiency is a lacking or failure. And a syndrome is a disease reflecting a particular set of symptoms. So it's an obtained failure to resist disease. To review, when the virus HIV has significantly weakened the immune system, it becomes known as AIDS. But how exactly do you get HIV, and how do you avoid it? I decided to interview several other overqualified experts and ask them more of these basic questions. This is Dr. Lawrence. He's pretty much the top guy in AMFAR, or the American Foundation for AIDS Research. He also edits two journals on AIDS and oversees a lab at Cornell University. The virus can come into the body in a number of different ways. It can come in through breaks in the skin, it can come in through a blood transfusion, come in sexually. It can, come, it can pass through the placenta in terms of, of mother to infant transmission. And it, it latches itself onto cells in the immune system. And it basically doesn't let go. HIV is transmitted largely in its made mode of transmission worldwide as a sexually transmitted disease. Dr. Redfield is one of the guys who originally discovered how HIV is transmitted. He runs a clinic at the University of Maryland. I'm finding that most of these experts work at universities. It's a pattern. Uh, it really is a virus that's relatively difficult to transmit and requires very specific situations for it to transmit. Very intimate relationships. Wait a minute. Did he just say that it's relatively difficult to get? It's relatively difficult to transmit. He did. If it's difficult to transmit, then why do we have to be so careful? Why is it spread so much? I mean, I would get paranoid if I touch something that may have been exposed to the virus at one point. And that's even if I had gloves. And it's very important to understand that it's not spread through casual contact, through hugging, light kissing. It's not spread through doorknobs or, or toilet seats, or even eating the same utensils as a person with HIV. So like the experts said, most people who are infected get it from sexual contact, which is why it's often called a sexually transmitted disease. But you can also get it from needle sharing, childbirth, breastfeeding, and blood transfusions, although blood transfusions are now considered safe in the United States. 
Now because the virus must enter your bloodstream, casual contact like bumping into someone won't get you infected. And light kissing isn't going to either. And just for the record, you won't get it from sharing cups, forks, toilet seats, or subway seats. It's really an enormous gift today that with the advancements in therapy we have that now people can actually live a natural lifetime. The AIDS virus itself is called a retrovirus and so the medicines are medicines against the retrovirus and so we call them antiretroviral medications or ARVs. They're different than antibiotics. Antibiotics are made against bacteria and fungi and they're just very, very different classes of drugs. Penicillin is an antibiotic. It's very good at attacking many different kinds of bacteria. It would be worthless against the AIDS virus HIV. ARVs make all the difference in HIV. Without ARVs, the virus can run rampant. But when people receive ARVs, the ability of the HIV virus to reproduce itself is slowed or stopped. To get technical, a person is diagnosed with AIDS if they have an AIDS-defining condition or their CD4 count drops below 200. But these ARVs help keep that CD4 count up, allowing them to fight infection instead of reproducing the HIV virus. I think it's very important to realize that these medications don't cure you of HIV. All they do is prevent the HIV from reproducing itself. It is a true medical miracle in terms of these drugs, but you have to stay adherent to them and they have important side effects. Um, in that sense, life is never completely normal. The ability to use these medicines is sort of countered with the opportunity that these medicines can cause toxicities. Patients who are later on in the disease stage or who come in at that later stage, their life is extremely different. For them, you know, they have frequent uh, medical visits, could be hospitalized, could be having home care, having IVs at home, so it it's really spans the spectrum. One of the complexities is in the United States today, about half the people who start on medicine fail in the first year. And when they fail, they fail uh, many times because the virus now has gotten smarter than the medicine. In those cases, you have to take more complex regimens, more complex medicines with other side, types of side effects, and it becomes more of a struggle. Such that in the United States, about 15 percent of people who get infected are now infected with virus that's already resistant to the medicine. All of the drugs that we're working on keep the virus in check. The virus will eventually evade them, we'll have new drugs, but it's not going to cure anyone. There are many, many, many different kinds of HIV and it's mutating all the time. You also have to worry about getting infected with another virus on top of it. Uh, and you have to make certain that you're not going to infect someone else. It's important to understand that the HIV virus is constantly mutating, resulting in many different strains. HIV eventually This means that just because you have the virus does not mean that you can have sex with other HIV positive people and be okay. You can get reinfected with another strain of the virus, which makes it way less likely the ARVs will work. There's no room to play around. Half the people living with HIV in the United States don't even know they have it. The unfortunate thing about HIV is once it infects a person, after the initial infection, it can remain uh, in the body for years without causing any symptoms. I think it's a good idea that everyone knows their status, and I would encourage all people to get tested for this virus. It's not something that, that you should consider has a stigma attached to it. There are now many places testing can be done anonymously and confidentially across the globe, and most are free of charge. One can go to local health departments, private doctor's offices, hospitals, or specialized HIV testing clinics. And with recent advancements in science, there are now rapid tests, either blood or saliva, which take only 20 minutes to get results. Only 20 minutes to know whether you're positive or negative. HIV has already killed more people than all the famines, floods, wars, all the natural disasters in all of our prior history. AIDS is the scariest pandemic the world has ever faced. You see the AIDS epidemic ripping families apart. I mean, it is really one of the most effective ways to destroy a family. 14,000 people get infected with HIV every day. That's one person every time you breathe. 
120 people contracted HIV in the time it took to watch this film. 121. I'm bothered when I read in the newspapers that AIDS is a chronic disease and can be treated as such, like diabetes or high blood pressure. AIDS is not diabetes and AIDS is not high blood pressure. This is a disease that can kill you and often will. It's a disease that you can spread to other people and that you can prevent that spread to other people. Um, and we need to get that message out. What happens next really is up to us. <laughs>